Entrepreneur Podcast, the number one podcast for bringing you behind the scenes with real online earners. No fake gurus here. We have John Bread. No, <laughs> John Bread. no I'm just kidding. John, John Bread. Yeah. How you doing, everybody? Um, I'm in from Los Angeles. How are you guys? Yes, LA. We, uh, we actually got introduced to this guy from our good friend, Cameron Hush. Yeah. Shout out to Cam. Yeah. Shout solid out to Cam dudes. and his red Porsche. Yes. Yeah. We just, we, if you haven't seen his entrepreneurs in cars, check that one out because mm -hmm. it is fun and good. He's got, he dropped some knowledge. He dropped some scaling knowledge in there too, which is great. For sure. Um, I was going to say, we, Cam, you and Cam just had a lunch or a dinner the other day, you were saying, right? Yeah, it was pretty, pretty crazy. So um, I know Cam through my roommate, Connor. He's in yeah. internet marketing too. And, uh, you know, Cam was texting with, I think, Connor a bit, and I had a few friends texting me, and I'm actually leaving to uh, leaving out of the country in a few days, and all these people wanted to meet up and, and get something, you know, I had a few friends in town, so I was like, why don't we just put together a little IM dinner and see who shows up, so we I called up a restaurant, like, eight hours notice, um, asked for the biggest table in the place, and invited <laughs> a bunch of people with my friends, and we had a good turnout, and Cam was one of the guys that showed up, so it was, it was pretty cool. Quick question for you. Is eight hours notice in LA like no notice? Um, yeah, on a busy night because I wanted to do a, like a price fix menu, like a uh, custom oh, menu. And I wanted to put, uh, I wanted to print um, like me and my friends, we have a fake like LLC company just for fun that we do like stupid shit under, you know? <laughs> and um, we wanted to put the logo of the company on the menu. So when everybody came, they, they could see it. It was just as a joke. So That's like, so funny. <laughs> custom menu. And I want you guys to have exactly what I want on the menu. It's like price. <laughs> uh, Did that work out for you? Yeah, yeah. It worked out. So our big really? company is called uh, Big Tings LLC. And it's literally a nothing company. Big Tings. I love it, man. Yeah, it's almost just, like just the, uh, the honest, or what's that? Not the Honest Company. Um, what's boring. Elon Musk? The Boring, boring company. company. Yeah, Boring. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so man. we, uh, we have an office, like a shared office, me and my friends that we just, we have a TV and we play video games and we just fuck around in. Yeah. Um, Dude, and we call that your lifestyle. Yeah. We call that the big tings office. <laughs> <laughs> they have like a little sign you, on the door. Do big tings get done in that office? Uh, sometimes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. It's hard. Like yesterday I went, I went in to hang out. I know I was going to come back to my apartment and um, one of my friends, Kylie, called me. He was like, hey, are you coming to the office? I was like, ah, I didn't plan to. He was like, well, Ario's here. Steven's here. Connor's here. Michael's here. He's like, you got you to gotta come. I was like, all right. Showed up. Showed up for a quick hour. We literally listened to music. And I was like, all right, that's productive. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wow. funny. Man, do you want to give the people a background on what you do now just so they know who you are? Yeah, yeah. So um, as of now, I run a, um, a fitness uh, fitness product called motivated fit. Um, you may have seen it online. It's we've been pushing it pretty hard. Uh, so I partnered with a celebrity influencer, celebrity fitness influencer. He trains, um, fifth harmony girls, Normani from fifth harmony, the game, um, Prince Royce, J -Lo. previously Jen Jennifer Lopez, Damn. And a few others. Love J Lo. So I actually just yeah. got hit with the ad before I came on here. That's the only reason I know. That. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Were you on the website? uh maybe maybe I, I hope you weren't then it was just a cold traffic ad and that's even cooler right yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so I, I found this guy on instagram and i mean i was following him for some time and i was like man this guy is so freaking good right his content if you've been to his instagram his content is unbelievable and at the time where i was following him he only had 60 or seventy thousand followers yeah, yeah. i looked at this guy and i was like man this guy is just he should have at minimum you know six seven hundred thousand followers with the content he's putting out instructional yeah. he's charismatic he knows how to make posts he's very creative like this guy like if i if i helped him maybe you know we could do something yeah. and he had all the right elements right he looked good he's from la he trained yeah. celebrities and i had a background of fitness stuff too yeah. uh, especially online fitness products so i was like okay let me reach out to this guy and see what happens so i, I cold dm'd him and i was like hey man i think i could make you a lot of money like yeah. let's link up is that exactly what you wrote or do you recall? It was a little longer. It was like, um, hey, Brandon, this is who I am. I work in this space. I think I can make you a lot of money. Like, let's yeah. yeah. And he hit me back right away. We got on a call. And like a week later, we did a deal um, to launch his physical or his uh, digital product. Nice. And from there, it was like, all right, let's, let's go. 
we wrote a script out, we did built out a VSL, we built out the offer, I funnel hacked a few people, figured out what I wanted to do. And then we, we started pre-selling it without a product. And how, how long ago was this? Product. That was uh, probably, when I approached it, it was probably May of last year. Gotcha. I really want to hear that story, but before that, let's like dial it back to how you got into the internet marketing scene. Yeah. Yeah. So advertising and everything. I'm pretty young still. I'm 20, uh, 24. So, nice. um, when I was in college, I started a, a business. It was, I wanted to sell, uh, <clears throat> like men's accessories and jewelry and yeah. watches online. Yeah. And, uh, what I did was, um, I, I, I wanted to start a business, but I, a, I didn't have a lot of money to start one and B, I didn't really know what to do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the easiest thing was, and I think this was before like Shopify was really big and like you knew about it everywhere. It was like just when it was Shopify just came out. So the conversation was like, Oh, Magento or Shopify or WordPress. Like, what do you do? Yeah, like, yeah. Nobody really knew. So I was like, I, I was a fan of like watches and stuff. And I think I sold a few watches that I own on eBay, like small, like two, three hundred dollar watches, and they sold mm -hmm. really fast. And I was like, oh, like I could probably make make some money doing this. So I what I ended up doing is I went to a trade show um, out of luck. I don't know why I was there, and there was a couple of watch companies. So I got the sales reps cards, and I called them and I said, hey, can I buy some of your watches at wholesale? Yeah. And they're like, yeah. And I said, okay, cool. So I bought some. <laughs> Simple and, enough, right? Yeah, and these companies, they were big companies, but they weren't really selling their own watches online. So there was a demand for people to buy their products online, right? Back yeah. Then. So I was like, oh, I could probably do it. So I set up like a generic website, like a Shopify website, and I bought their watches wholesale, and I put them on the website, and it was like a little curated watch boutique. And mm -hmm. they started selling. I just started buying like, I was well, I started it, and the first day, no one came to the website. And I was like, yeah. Oh, like, I didn't understand that you had to do stuff to get people to the <laughs> website. If, if you, you just know. build it, they won't come. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, really, I was kind of confused. I was like, I thought if you make a Shopify site and you make it cool, like the internet's just a place where people search and then they <laughs> go to your site. Right. Like I was so naive. Yeah. Um, I didn't know anybody. There was like no content out there or anything. So I, I, I actually remember going on um, Shopify support and saying, Hey, there's like, I built this site. <laughs> right and um did they so respond like, yeah they were like oh um it was something it was a long time ago they were like oh you need to do stuff right like, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with your site we tested it it's all good it's like, yeah okay. so it's like oh yeah okay i gotta do some marketing yeah, um like, who is this guy i love it yeah so uh then i was like um yeah i've seen a bunch of ads on google and i've seen a bunch of ads on facebook i could probably drive some traffic like that um, so I ended up buying PPC ads, um, bidding on the brand's keyword searches, right? Cause these brands were getting uh, tons of traffic. Yeah. Dude. Um, and they literally not. were not selling their own stuff. If they, they either weren't, or if they were, they're doing a poor job. And then if they were and doing a poor job, then they weren't buying ads. Gotcha. Right. So it was wow. one of the three. What an opportunity. Um, what year was this? Oh man. 20. It's not that long ago. Maybe five, six years ago. Oh, crazy. Yeah. It's just like, it's insane how fast this industry grows. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Five I years was, uh, should be like 20. <laughs> senior in high school or freshman in college. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you know, they were, they were boutique brands. So we're not talking about Casio or yeah. um, G-Shock or um, whatever, Swatch. We're talking about like watch companies that are like under $50 million. So they had a, a, a niche, but they weren't like mass markets. So they kind of didn't know what they were doing either. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I would buy a PPC ads. I would rank on the top of Google and I would do Google shopping back then for those watches. And I, I started selling through those pretty nice. fast. Nice. Wow. So um, I was like, oh, this is, is kind of cool. Like, did it blow up at all? It, it did. It did like, at that time it did good compared to like what I know now. Yeah. It, but I didn't know, I was really naive. Like I didn't understand the nuances. Like I barely understood Google Analytics. I barely understood uh, how like in theory a pixel would work or barely yeah. understood how um, to drive properly, tra drive traffic properly and barely understood like email marketing and barely like all these things. I, I, I it was hard to put everything together. Right? Yeah. So, so it was profitable and I ran it for a year or two and then it just got like the competition for it just got really crazy and I just stopped doing it. 
but mm-hmm. I made a good chunk of money for you know a freshman in, in college um yeah I probably did like you know three four hundred grand or something in that year yeah and that's solid you know it's like did you stay in college after that yeah I stayed in college and that that wasn't you know that was 300 some grand top line it wasn't anything yeah. crazy. I was gonna say plus you're Indian I'm sure your parents would have killed you <laughs> oh yeah so I, I stayed in school and um it wasn't enough to like to you know break me out of school yeah, yeah. But it was like a really good learning experience because it opened my eyes to, hey, this kind of is possible. There's some some things you could do. And it it really um, taught me not only that like internet marketing business, but it taught me like big boy wholesale business. Nice. As well, right. Because yeah, I was yeah. essentially a buyer for my e-commerce shop. Yeah. You know, these other uh, other brands. And, and what's really crazy is um, at that time, I was like, man, this whole inventory thing is kind of stupid. Like I need to buy this stuff, pay for it now, and then sell it later. Like I was like, why can't someone? Dr- why can't I drop ship this shit, right? Yeah. And at that time, I I don't even think I came across Oberlo or AliExpress or anything. I don't even <laughs> think it was there, right? There's this other like whack job app that I installed on Shopify to try to drop ship product, and it was like, I was like so early to that. I was like, I kind of was like, like a little bit too early. Yeah. Right? Just like uh, I'm kind of in the middle. There's no information. I don't really know what to do. So. Yeah, you're that too early first to team, man. That was my first little innovator over here. Yeah, yeah, right. So you did the watch thing, you closed it down. What did you shift to after that? So I just focused on school. Yeah. Um, and I was an accounting major. Ah. Uh, um, and my dad's a CPA too, so he really wanted me to to get into it, right? Yeah. So, um, the the school I went to is Cal State University Northridge. They have a very good um, accounting program. They're actually known in the greater Los Angeles area for they're not one of the name brand schools they're not USC UCLA whatever but yeah all the big accounting firms in LA hire first from CSUN nice um, oh. for whatever reason and I think it's they have some special accreditation or <clears throat> a lot of the alumni from these big um accounting firms went to CSUN so they paid back right nice. so it was like it was a great opportunity um but long story short I did a um, internship with one of them. I went there for a day. And I was like, <clears throat> this is the worst day of my life. <laughs> I went in and I just looked around. And I was like, this place absolutely sucks. And yeah. I was thinking, okay, A, <clears throat> you guys are talking about other businesses that you didn't start. Like, I don't want to do that. I want to start businesses. Yeah. Uh, B, you guys aren't getting paid nearly enough. And C, you're working fucking like 60 hours, 70 hours a week in a yeah. building with a suit on. Like, so I went in and I came home and I called the recruiting manager from the school and I said, hey, like, uh, I don't think I could do this. And she said, okay, yeah, I'll take you off the um, internship for next year or whatever. I was like, no, I don't mean, I mean, I can't do this now. She said, <laughs> yeah. okay, like, you're going to put in like how many days, like next week? I said, no, like, I'm not, I can't come in tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. And so I, at that point, I changed my major to marketing, and I started. How did your dad feel about that? I think he understood it. He understood yeah, it. Yeah, that's cool. I, 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 he saw how depressed it was when I came home. It was like the worst, <laughs> worst day ever. Yeah. And um, um, yeah, I switched to marketing, and I sat in a class with a sixty-five-year-old dude, seventy-year-old dude, trying to teach about marketing, and I, <clears throat> the guy. I remember not showing up to many of the classes and then, but I'm, I'm really like not book smart, but I understand how to take tests and yeah. study for classes and things like that. So I like, I don't need to test, right? yeah, I was like, I don't need to show up to class for this. Like how hard could this, this thing be? Yeah. So, the, you know, the first test comes around and it's like all about digital marketing. Right. I'm like, oh shit. Okay, cool. This is great. I'll be good at this. And, um, I wrote, it was like, you know, I forget a bunch of questions about social media, digital marketing, Instagram, things like that. I took the test and I filled it out. I I, I left the class member feeling really good. And um, the next class we come back in and he writes the curve on the board. And it's like the lowest grade is a 45 and the highest is like a 105 because someone got bonus points. And it's like, oh, I probably got a 105. And he starts passing out the test. And I look at mine and I got a a 45. (laughs) And I was like, man, I answered every question perfectly. And I went to the, the professor. I was like, what's the deal? Like, this is, this is great. He was like, no, 
you're supposed to uh, answer the questions based on the notes in my slides that I show in class, right? And I was like, well, I never came to class. And I was like, well, my answers are based on reality, right? Because yeah. I did digital marketing. And at that point, I was like, man, this guy just, he doesn't know. I'm literally learning digital marketing from a 65-year-old dude who doesn't remember what happened last week. You know? Yeah, man. that's. I like, was like, how could I actually wow. learn anything about marketing here? So at this point, I'm like, fuck this, dude. I'm like, this is, this is awful, yeah. right? And that was my point where I was like, okay. I had, I had a couple other things in the work on um, business side. And I was like, okay, like my paths are conjoining, like this, I, I'm not learning anything from this. And I have a few opportunities that we could talk about later in um, like the entrepreneur space. And I was like, yeah. okay, I just gotta, I'm done with this. Like I could always go back to school, but I have some opportunities right now that I just I can't pass. Nice, so, yeah. man. So you that finished, so you called school quits and what'd you transition to then? So um, at that point I was doing, um, consulting for um like what's the best way to explain i was doing consulting for um larger brands right yeah. and larger brands that have had success but they didn't have they haven't leveraged their success in digital or online. gotcha um so i you know one of the companies was a um it's an apparel company they were doing multi-million dollars at the time and crazy success, but they weren't really leveraging. And then mm -hmm. the other company was a fitness company that they weren't, they had a great product and they weren't really doing anything either. Mm -hmm. So I use basically what I learned, you know, when I failed my watch company yeah. and learned all of these tricks, I basically implemented on there. And now there's more information I, and I had more resources um, because I wasn't putting my money into it. I had other people's resources to experiment and learn and then basically extrapolate. Nice. Yeah. How long did that go for? Yeah. So the crazy thing is I still do stuff for both of those companies. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yeah. So, um, uh, in the fitness company, I, I leveraged, um, an equity percentage into it. Right? Nice. So you own part that's, of that. That's yeah, exactly. So Perfect. that's how, um, that's how I kind of transitioned into, uh, what I do with Brandon and the influencer side. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Then, um, the other one is a, uh, an apparel company primitive skateboarding um, oh crazy we're still helping them yeah yeah running their entire digital social all that stuff so those are they're my nice. two. they're pretty big aren't they yeah they're uh, knock on wood it's been it's been pretty hectic this year so it's been cool nice man Ho hopefully good hectic oh yeah only good for sure yeah is that are they both local to you yeah so i mean everything is within 10 minutes to me so la man it's such a booming yeah. spot for entrepreneurship exactly exactly it's pretty cool so um yeah so that's how that's basically how um you know i learn all this stuff from yeah. um, the the fitness um product side and with those same partners i actually leveraged those partners or not deliver leverage those partners but i i partnered with those guys as well that nice. does uh, with brandon so those are my co-founders with brandon i feel like that's such a good way too for people like uh who maybe not want to start a business completely on their own or they don't know what to do, like learn, get really damn good at a skill and then partner with someone for equity. Yeah. And honestly, like, um, it's a win-win scenario because yeah. at that time, you know, I, there was a bank account with, with cash in it and I didn't put any money into it. And yeah. there was, um, you know, a credit card and LLC mm -hmm. already made and they had a accountant and literally all I had to do was, do what I do, right? Yeah. Is yeah. bring traffic and, and get, get them sales. Um, we get that question a lot. Like, how do I get started if I don't have any money? And man, there's always a way there's so many free courses out there. There's so much great stuff on YouTube. Like you can teach yourself almost any skill, especially in this industry and provide value mm -hmm. to another company that has no clue. hundred percent. And there's a lot of damn good companies that you could help and they, you could learn something from them as well. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. We, uh, we actually consulted with a company um, a few weeks ago, um, me and another guy. Anyways, they're doing like 200 million a year and they like haven't even tried retargeting. <laughs> yeah, no, I believe it. Like Kylie Crazy. Jenner doesn't run one paid app. No. Really? Yeah. Or, uh, oh, Kylie Cosmetics. You know, yeah. imagine if she had a retargeting funnel or an abandoned card sequence or anything. You, know, yeah. <laughs> you should reach out, bro. Reach out. Uh, one of my friends actually reached out and they were like, yeah, we're just not interested. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing good without you. Yeah, we're doing fine. 
<laughs> that's funny. So talk about the stuff you're doing with Brandon. So you still got the other two consulting things where you have equity in one and then the right. stuff with Brandon, man, how, how big is his social media following now? Okay. Yeah. So that's the crazy part. So <clears throat> essentially, you know, while doing those other things, I saw some flaws. I, the major flaws were scalability, right? Because you have physical products, mm -hmm. um, shipping issues, logistics issues, you had inventory issues. Um, and uh, just with, dig with physical products, there's other, other things, right? You yeah. can't scale as much as you want. So I was like, okay, um, I had this idea in my head to do some sort of digital, digital product. I was like, this, is, this thing's prime, I think. You know, as costs go up, as CPMs go up and ad space gets more expensive, like we have to start getting creative on what our offer is. So, at, sure. you know, early on, I had this idea to do some sort of digital recurring, um, I guess, fitness thing, because I knew fitness and fitness is very easy sell because you're solving a problem. Yeah. Um, it's got a lot of emotion attached to it, too. Exactly. So uh, I saw Brandon when he was at... Um, I don't know, 60 to 90,000 followers. And that was early last year. Now he's at 300 and wow. Yeah. That's and awesome. Most of it, if you look at social blade, most of the rise is from well, since November, I would say Please. maybe 200 and maybe 200,000. That, that, that uh, tool 50, you just mentioned is actually something we haven't talked about before. Do you want to explain that tool a little bit? Yeah. So social blade is, um, let me pull it up. Social Blade is a site where you could actually look at brand accounts and influencer accounts and see how much they're growing per day, per week, and you could see their um, trajectory. Yeah. Also, what it does is it gives it gives that influencer a grade based on um, how they deem, how uh, good their followers seem to be, right? Are their followers engaging? Are their followers liking, sharing? Do they have any bots? bought followers yeah. etc so you could see someone on there for instance like a model girl or something and she has two million followers and you're like oh i'm gonna seed her or it's, i'm gonna give her some product or i'm gonna blah blah, blah. and then you look at social blade and her grades an f you're like yeah oh, there's, there's no point right? so a great tool to find influencers yeah. to push your product we use it to, to find yeah. influencers and to rate them to see if it's even worth your time or money yeah so, we yeah. use it for uh watching our youtube stats and also for seeing our growth on instagram I don't know what your grade is though. It's probably not the best. <laughs> it's hard to get a good grade, um, but it's just, it's a good baseline, right? Yeah. No, it's really cool, man. And you can watch like live. I, the, the cool thing I like is the live streaming uh, subscriber count. Oh, I haven't seen that. Seen yeah. For YouTube. It's pretty cool. Oh, man. for YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So on here, uh, the numbers okay. are uh, Brandon. I don't see monthly averages. It says about 10,000 a month right now. Crazy. That's big, yeah. man. Yeah. It's, I think it's going to start peaking a little more than that. Like November, I wish I could pull up the number for November, December, but it was, he was gaining, you know, a thousand, 2000 a day. Is it from paid ads mostly? The paid ads. So yeah. the combination is paid ads and viral content, right? Yeah. So he has great content um, already, but he didn't have any juice behind it. So the second we dropped the course and we poured a little gasoline on the fire and gasoline, I mean, traffic, his engagement just went through the roof and his stuff started going crazy viral. So That's like, awesome. If you look at before we partnered, his videos were getting 20, 30,000 views. Now his videos are getting a bad day is 150,000. Damn. Yeah. It's Dude, that's awesome. fire, man. Right? That's so cool. So it's cool. what kind of like when you started, so you helped him put together the course, you guys wrote this VSL together. You, you really handled the traffic side of things. Did you just buy this traffic on Facebook and Instagram or where did you focus your dollars on? Yeah. So originally the first few days, um, when we launched, I didn't want to run that much traffic. I just kind of wanted to see how his organic, um, would respond and it responded pretty good. And I wanted to, um, just basically get some data that I could run some things off of. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, then I ran just retargeting traffic to, um, his custom audiences. So people who have engaged, that's, that's the best thing about influencer stuff is you could run, if you partner with them, you could utilize their tools way better than they can right yeah. you, could, you could create custom audiences based on people who've engaged with their page you could create um custom audiences based on their followers you could create custom audience based on people who have saved their posts right mm -hmm. so now all of a sudden um without doing anything i have all these custom audiences and lookalikes i could leverage and i haven't even run a single um person in my website 
So I'm starting with the ace in my, in my hand. Yeah. Question for you. Can you make custom audiences off Instagram engagement? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you can? Yeah. So, I mean, he had 190,000 followers or whatever it was at the time. So now I have a custom audience of his followers and a custom audience of people who have saved his posts and a custom audience of people who have engaged and a custom audience of people who have sent him messages. Yeah. And a custom audience of people who went to his website because he actually had a pixel on his site. Or, yeah. Or whatever. And he had an email list. I'm like, all right, yeah. cool. We're, we're sitting pretty without even doing anything. Man, there's so, so many after, custom audiences, man. Yeah. Never ending. And then out the gate, after a few days or a week or so, I started running some paid. Um, and yeah, it's started running some cold paid and it started doing pretty good. I was like, okay, we're on. Did you go straight for cold? Did you go straight for cold paid or did you do retargeting out of the game? No, no, I started with retargeting. To oh, his. sorry. I missed that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I ran cold to his audiences or retargeting to his audiences and I gotcha. ran retargeting. My uh, bad. No, all good. The campaign as well. And then, uh, so when you started running cold, your original VSL worked right out the gate? No, it was, um, it worked, but it was a little dicey because the AOV was a little low. Um, gotcha. And AOV, it, just it so was, people who don't know, it's average order value. Yeah. So, I mean, our average order value was, it wasn't optimized, right? Of course, yeah. I looked at how other people were running their offers and kind of took inspiration from them. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the pricing was all over the place. The order bump pricing was all over the place. The back end stuff mm -hmm. it was like, wasn't put together as well. Yeah. So since that point, we've actually doubled. Yeah, probably doubled our average order value since nice. then. Nice. Despite iterating and tweaking. And we've increased our conversion rate. And that's so important. I feel like that's one thing that people miss. They think if they put something up and drive some traffic, it'll convert right out the gate. But there's really a lot of iterations you have to go through to make something work. And like what he's talking about now, if you increase your average order value, um, the more you can increase it, basically the more traffic you can buy. Yeah. Right. And like, you know, at our office, um, you know, our, our friend's <laughs> office, like we talk about, we have a big whiteboard and we talk about this stuff all the time, right? It, you have to be able to control the things that you can control. So yeah. you can't control, everyone's always complaining about Facebook yeah. and Instagram and Google. Control. I hear it every day and it's the most annoying thing in the world to me, right? Yeah. And um, so like, it's to the point where me and my friends, we just, we got out of a bunch of the groups and a bunch of these chats and we just don't listen to it because it's noise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Facebook is going to shit the bed like 90% of the time. That's fine. But you have to be better than that, right? You have yeah. to, you can't control the traffic that they're sending you. Obviously you could run better ads and do a bunch of things and hack Facebook sometimes. Sure. You can yeah. do it. But at the end of the day, what can you control? You can control your offer. You can control your pricing. You can control your conversion rate. You can control your average order value. And mm -hmm. if you, like I did, I doubled my average order value since I started. That's so doing a million. That's two million, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're doing no extra work. Same traffic. Yeah, so, yeah. And I, Dude, and I, I love that example you just gave. It's literally the same amount of traffic comes in, but double right. the revenue comes out. Yeah. For doing nothing. Yeah. For absolutely doing nothing, right? And then... Um, and then you increase your conversion rate from 1% to 2%. And now instead of doing that original 100 grand, you're doing 400 grand, right? Yeah. Because you doubled your um, AOV and you doubled. Yeah. It yeah. just compounds. It compounds. So control that, you know, like costs yeah. are going to go up. But shit, if, if I double my AOV again, I don't need to worry about costs going up another five years. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. It, that's, no, that's for sure. If you build out your back end, you get your recurring models going, like there's just so much you can do. You're right, man. Cause we've seen it right now. Like a friend of ours was spending heavy, heavy on Facebook. Um, and then when it shits the bed, it, it, it like, uh, it, it's a chain effect because for him, he's running all affiliate traffic. So he yeah. doesn't have control of the whole back end. Yeah. Right. He has a payout, whether he's over or above, it's his risk. Yeah. You know what I mean? I also find it's hard to get momentum again once you've been spending hard and then you get mm. kicked down or you got to pause yes. it to build that back up. It's the hardest thing in the world. Um, and, and these things don't matter when you're doing a thousand dollars in sales a day. Yeah. Know? But once you start really spending um, a lot of money on ads, like you want to get your money is worth because it, it gets scary sometimes. You know, you don't want to um, sit at your computer and you know, you have no margin for error. You're running on, you know, zero margin, 5% yeah. margin. And Facebook is going to have days where you have really, really good days or even Google or YouTube. You can have days where you have really, really good days. You can have days where you have really, really bad days. The, the name of the game is to like keep everything proper, 
make sure you're not getting too high, not getting too low, and you could afford the losses and you could take mm-hmm. your wins. Like that's yeah. Do you rely solely on uh, Facebook traffic or do you guys run multiple channels? So we're trying to get a little savvier on um, what we're running. So we run Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And we're starting to dabble into Pinterest as well. Nice. Interesting. Have, yeah. you tried, have you tried Snapchat for that? Snapchat's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it? I can't get it to work I, I, at all. That's I, funny. We've heard, uh, we've heard mixed stuff on Snapchat. Yeah, I mean, I've heard mixed stuff too. Um, I've had a bunch of people that I know test it. I, it yeah. seems like it's only working for really clickbaity affiliate offers yeah. from what I hear. Black That's what I, we've heard too. I get hit with that male diet shit all the time. For no reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. What uh, is your demographic generally an older one? Demographic is very diverse. Uh, it's probably 60% male, yeah. 40% female. And then age is probably pretty even across the board. Oh, interesting. Really? Yeah. I know, uh, I had assume anyways that like um, Snapchat would cater more to a younger audience. It would. I just, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I just, I spent. <laughs> yeah, I'll put your link in there. Yeah. Sure. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, no, that's cool though. So right now you guys are uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and then you said you then, tried some Google? Yeah, we're doing Google uh, retargeting and brand stuff. And then we do a little bit of Google display. How's nice. YouTube? YouTube's great. Yeah? Yeah. Nobody nobody touches it, but it's great. Dude, I know. I feel like YouTube's such a little gem right now that like a lot of people aren't touching, but their traffic is huge. Their traffic is huge. And um, with uh, the CPA bidding, it's way more stable. So you could, um, and they're, what do they call it? They're similar you, to audiences or like look like audiences and they're really powerful. Could you explain CPA bidding for people? So CPA bidding is essentially target cost bidding in Facebook. So in Facebook, um, if you have an ad or not an ad, if you know what general um, your cost per purchase is looking like, and it's, it, it's fluctuating day to day, like some days, let's say you want a $20 cost per purchase and some days you're getting 40 and some days you're getting 10 and you're like, oh, this is too unstable for me. You could go in and put in a, a $25 target cost bid right on an ad set and put a high budget and you know it'll stay within line that bid Mm -hmm. Uh, is it pretty accurate on facebook it's great the only problem with facebook is it it's hard for it to spend the budget Mm -hmm. it doesn't spend Um, on google it's fairly similar to that except it's easier to get it to spend the budget and it's like the budget once you get it to spend is way more stable on facebook sometimes it spends sometimes it doesn't sometimes it does Mm and google it's it's way more stable and then you could scale it yeah. better. That's awesome. That's a good little tidbit, man. I didn't know about that. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. CPA bidding is pretty great. You could use it, uh, CPA bidding for uh, search campaigns as well. That's oh, really? Good. Yeah. So Damn. C- CPA bidding on Facebook, that's just in a, and when it's just target cost bidding. Target cost, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you go higher than what you want? Or Yeah, I go higher. Um, but at that point, you're just looking for scale and, um, mm-hmm like mm-hmm. efficiency do you so do you ever run auto or are you just usually if you everyone makes fun of me i don't run a lick of auto anymore really yeah interesting everything i do is um target cost bid cap yeah and retargeting i'll run auto yeah but for the just to clarify how much do you spend a day roughly on that um anywhere from five thousand to fifteen thousand a day Damn. Well, yeah there you go guys it works yeah, yeah. so crazy that's awesome dude uh, yeah, we've been uh, talking to some people that like down here in Denver and they're, they're like, um, refi guys yeah, yeah. and they'll spend 25, 30 grand a day. Um, but they do a lot of like CPA stuff on Google too. And they've been pretty happy with it. They found it yeah. to be a pretty like stable channel. Google is, um, it's pretty underused right now. So. Yeah, no doubt, man. I mean, the, the problem is with Facebook, it's like a video game. You could go in and. <laughs> You yeah. kind of figure everything out pretty fast and you, you throw a pixel on your website and you upload an email list and you're, you're good mm-hmm. with um, Google. It's a little more tedious. There's like, you have to set up like tag manager and uh, Google analytics and you got to understand what you're doing. And the, the mm-hmm. campaign setup is a little wacky. It's kind of hard, but yeah. once you learn how to do it. Um, yeah, man. I tried to set up some, uh, some Google ads for our, our channel and I couldn't get it to spend no matter what it's I did. Worst. It's the worst. I, I didn't but understand. And I hit up the, I hit up support and they're just like, Oh, do this. So I did that. Still didn't spend. 
yeah and and then most people would just give up right there right yeah. like that's why people just don't do it because it's just not fun yeah that's good B bigger the barrier to entry the more i like it yeah for sure for so sure i mean I, back to that. like i actually sat there and did it i hired somebody to to smart you know, up for me. Uh, i love it but um yeah how much uh how much have you guys scaled this new uh, business or fitness brand up to because it hasn't even been a year yet yeah it's been less than a year um what are we doing we're doing like every month is fluctuating but we're yeah. doing like let's see we've crossed i think two and a half million or something in sales very cool wow yeah you know the moral of that story is if someone dm you dms you and says they can make you money don't you might ignore, yeah. you might want to hop on the phone don't, don't ignore yeah, them exactly what was it at I'm, what was it doing before you jumped on so the fitness uh, this product was non-existent before i jumped oh on. yeah yeah, yeah I, I, i'm a co-founder oh yes yeah. so, because he yeah. was just doing personal training before yeah he was doing personal training and celebrity training Gotcha. Probably some meal okay. plans every now and again. Yeah. So he, his business was, I mean, he was doing great for himself, but he wasn't doing um, mm -hmm. uh, like this Too type of years. stuff, right? Yeah. yeah, so yeah, yeah. He was doing um, <clears throat> meal prepping for celebrities and CEOs. He was doing um, in-house personal training and he was doing on the road tour training for musicians and actors when they're- Gotcha. Uh, wow. Yeah. What, uh, what's the package you guys have built now? Is it like, kind of like, you know, shed your belly fat or gain muscle or how's it look? Yeah. So that's a great question. And that's where I see like our biggest growth is going to be is, mm. um, exactly what you said and segmenting it out to a bunch of different um, yeah. offers right now. It we've been rocking our same offer since day one and it's literally at home celebrity blueprint to lean out and it's oh, a cool. transformation. Uh, you don't need any equipment. You do not need any gym. You can do it at our office or in your living room. Wow. And that's the same offer we've been running. But uh, what we're looking to do is obviously one offer doesn't fit all people. As yeah. you guys, like some people are trying to gain weight. Some people are trying to lose stubborn fat. Some people are trying to get healthy. Some people, whatever. Yeah. But we're trying to create, we're in the process of creating different offers for every different demo. Mm -hmm. Nice. So that's, that's awesome. Like next 60 day plan is to get that launched. Yeah. And then the way you guys have it set up now, what's the, uh, excuse me, the front end cost to consumer and do you have any residual built in? Yeah. So, um, it's $47 front end offer. And, um, my goal for that is just to pump as much traffic to it as possible. Yeah. Um, I'm not really worried about the front end being profitable. Yeah. Um, I make money on the order bump upsell one, upsell two, upsell three, upsell four. Nice. One of those upsells is a recurring offer. And then I also make money on, uh, my email sequences on the back end. Very cool, man. Yeah, I, I think that's one big key too is like it makes it harder if someone else is selling a product for $47 and they have no upsells, they have no back end, like you're just going to basically clean the floor with them. Yeah. Right, exactly. It's like Russell Brunson says whoever could afford to spend the most money to acquire a customer is going to win. Yeah. 100%, man. Do you have that's, reoccurring? Sorry. Yeah, so one of my upsells is actually a reoccurring offer. Ah, uh, nice. So um, the goal with that is like, if, as you guys know, if I had my initial offer as uh, recurring, my conversion rate is going to be lower. Yeah. So the way I did it is, yeah, I don't need to be profitable on the front end 47, but I am. If yeah. I, if that was a subscription, uh, if that was a subscription offer, it wouldn't be profitable. Yeah. And then my opt-in is pretty high to the recurring on the upsell. So, I mean, uh, it's, it's a, it would be dumb not to do it that way. Yeah. Do you guys right now, like, do you send them traffic straight to the VSL or do you do it to like an ebook to collect the email opt in and try to work it from there? Or how's it kind of, yeah, we do it straight to the VSL. Nice. Um, doing it to an ebook or free download or some sort of messenger opt in is probably smart. Yeah. Um, we are actually, we're doing some sort of, we're actually in the process of launching a new, um, like, uh, like editorial, like, type yeah. thing nice uh, and that's we tried it a few weeks ago and it worked pretty good so now we're just iterating on it that's awesome um does is facebook cool with running straight to vsl yeah um in the beginning i was getting a lot of issues yeah <clears throat> and the issues were um just like spammy stuff because i have um i have a countdown timer i had they weren't really before and after pictures but they were like side by side comparisons oh yeah uh, 
and I was getting shut down a lot. But <clears throat> I ran the side by side comparisons for like four months without them saying anything. It was mm-hmm. like one day everything just like was getting flagged. All my ads were getting shut down and I was super confused because my ads are really compliant. I yeah. don't take any chances on ads just because yeah. I don't want to mess up my ad account at all. Yeah. And I was like, what, what is going on? And I called my rep. I was like, what's the deal? Like every one of my ads are getting shut down and I tried change and it wasn't telling me what was going on. Mm-hmm. And then he couldn't figure it out either. And this was like, we were selling really hot that week and ads were going really good. I was like, dude, we're, what's going on? We've got to figure this out. Everything's getting shut down. And he said, I don't know. I don't know. He, so he escalated it up and they said, Oh my, the landing page BSL was the issue. Yeah. Uh, so I changed a bunch of things on it. And, um, like I, I removed the photos I made it less aggressive. I changed some thumbnails around and it, it's been fine ever since. How did, uh, so when you, cause I know a lot of people, they're so afraid to change something, work on their landing page. How did that affect your conversion rate when you made it like quote unquote less aggressive? Yeah, it, it, my conversion rate dropped for sure. Time? Um, it wasn't big time. I mean, my margin for the day was probably dropping like eight to 10%. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, which it hurt, but I mean, I, I've kind of iterated back onto it. So we've got it back up. Nice. That's oh, awesome. That's There's cool. always a way to get it done. Yeah. And honestly, I think the issue was the reason why I was able to run it for some time I don't know if it's this exactly the reason why, but I was running that page for some time before it got yeah. shut down. Yeah. And I thought, what, what did I change to get it shut down? Cause there's no way that something just happened. And I remember I actually hired somebody to increase my page speed. Yeah. And I think by increasing my page speed, like Facebook was able to track some things better, whatever, because things were taking to load. Yeah. Um, and then it start, then once I changed the page speed and it got faster, then uh, I start, the page started getting flagged. I don't know yeah. what the logic was, but I, I made a connection between those Dude, two that's things. crazy. I would have not connected those two things, but it makes I sense. I don't know if that's real, like, but that's kind of the correlation I made. Right yeah. when that, this happened. So there must be something there. No doubt. Interesting. How, um, I just want to touch on that. How important is page speed? Because I don't think we've ever really talked about that before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's pretty damn important. So when I was starting, um, with this offer and this brand, I would have, um, let's call it a hundred thousand outbound clicks. Only about 70,000 of the people were actually hitting the website or 60,000 wow. people were hitting the website. So I had a 60%, that was 60%. Yeah. yeah. I actually got on a call with a good friend. You may know him, John Martin. He's friends with Cam as well. Uh, Great. sounds familiar. I don't know, John. Yeah. Um, so I was on a consulting call with him and he was like, dude, you're like wasting 40% of your budget because they're not hitting your, hitting your website. Yeah. I was, like, what? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, your page is too slow. And so I increased the page speed and then that number went from 60,000 to like 80 some thousand. Wow. 85,000. So I recouped, you know, 20%, whatever. Dude, that's amazing. How much of a spike free traffic did that create? Um, it was probably like, I don't know, like a few percent worth of margin. But then, yeah. yeah. You know every bit counts man that's for yeah. sure yeah that's yeah, I mean, cool. it's like it's a nerd game at the end of the day right like <laughs> yeah. us like, nerds are slowly taking over man but yeah I love that stuff man it's exciting it's fun because the reason why i like it is uh, what i'm doing with brandon and motivated is it's a combination of creativity and just nerd internet marketer yeah so, yeah like we have a lot of fun in, in terms of like the non-nerd stuff like if you've seen any of our ads, like I could show you a couple ads. I could share my screen. Yeah. Um, our ads are super fun, super different. And we're, we're Dude, not. Let's pull them up. They'll sound awesome. Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I could find a couple. We've got a lot of That's people the- sharing their screen lately. It never happens, but the last two podcasts, people are all about it. I like it. Yeah. It's uh, I mean, I'm down to show you guys all the stuff. It's super. Fun. If you're listening to this, you're going to have to watch the YouTube to see these screenshots. Oh, you, you can't, it doesn't work like that. Oh, no, no, it'll... We put it on YouTube, too. We put but it on some, YouTube, but oh, okay, some okay. people listen to it via podcast, right? Just, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. More people listen to it than they do watch it. But we'll change that. We'll get you over to YouTube, guys. So this is uh, one of our favorite ones. I'll share my screen right now. Cool. Oh, here it goes. Let's see it. Oh, nice. I didn't know I was on there. <laughs> okay. Dude, I've seen this guy before. 
Yeah. You kind of did the, uh, like, the, when I saw this, you know, the first thing I thought was Dollar Shave Club. Exactly. That's what so, it was. I, so just to clarify, I don't know if this is going to come through on the recording. I hope it does. Um, but if not, check out. I'll just show uh, like 10 seconds of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. throw it up. Oh, we can't hear the audio. Because it's in your ear, but that's fine, man. Oh, all good. But um, I'll, I'll explain it real quick. It's basically um, I know that's a strange. Dollar Shave Club style direct response video. Yeah. yeah. Super parody, um, like just very different from traditional fitness. It's yeah. We have to go, go very mass. And Seven million. These are the type of ads we do. Yeah, this one, a lot of it's paid, um, but it did, yeah. this one did great. Dude, that's crazy. I have seen this brand. I've definitely been hit before. Yeah, I, I'm sure. I mean, the... <laughs> I, I remember his car. I, I always get, I remember people's cars more than anything. The script was, you know, we, you know, we sat together and did the script and we tried to, we try to go out to dinner like once a week or whatever and, and just come up with script ideas. Yeah. yeah. So like, that's kind of the yin and my yang of like nerd internet marketer and like, yeah, man. you know, creative stuff. Talk um, about the production in this, man, because that's another thing people, I feel they, they feel like they have to have such like crazy production. Um, what do you yeah, guys you have? Can. Do you have a lot of cameras or how do you guys roll it out? I mean, we're fortunate that we, we could hire pretty good um, videographers and yeah. editors. But I mean, the first videos we did, we, um, I chopped up his, some of his Instagram clips and made it into a compilation video. Nice. I paid All shot on iPhone. Like, yeah. Easy. I paid $15 for it um, to an editor in the Philippines to chop it up and add subtitles. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't need to do anything crazy. What, what about, like, as far as your team size? How many people do you guys have over there? Yeah, I need to count. So, we have three customer service people. We have, I have a um, accountant dude, bookkeeper dude. I got a um, chargeback fraud, fraud person. Uh, I got a full time VA that's a uh, script writer. Yeah. Uh, I got. Where's that uh, VA based? So that VA is Phil, or no, he's in Canada actually. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I'm that's our personal, personal favorite. Yeah, we're, we're both from Canada. He's yeah, he's a great, uh, great dude. And then I got um, one in house dev and uh, uh one google ad buyer crazy nice. so around 10 yeah. give or take yeah Just something. Something. not even yeah that's awesome man yeah pretty lean yeah, yeah. But that's the best part about an online business man is like how much you can pump out on such a lean like you know business model right from cash to get started to the actual like that team and like your basic monthly costs it, it's pretty crazy um, and then anything else we need is, is freelance. So we freelance photographers all the time. We freelance video guys all the time. Yeah. We freelance editors all the time. Um, I freelance consultants all the time. Like I, I don't pretend to know everything. Um, yeah. And I've probably said, said things in this already that probably are wrong, but that's because I have a good <laughs> team of consultants that, you know, back me up on all this stuff. So I'm really good at, um, constructing what I want and building out like a vision and building out an offer and things like that. But when yeah. it comes to a lot of technical things, like I don't pretend to know it all. And that's where I have mm -hmm. good friends like Cam and Connor and John Martin, and my friends, Kyle, and all these guys that I go to the office with that we lean on each other. Yeah. makes sense, so. man. So as far as like your business model as a whole, cause one thing I've been really curious about lately is like stable online models. Cause I know yeah. a lot of affiliates, a lot of media buyers, man, it's like boom or bust. They don't get a lot of stability out of it. Um, recently, we had a dinner with the company and they do like 100 million a year or this year they're going to do, they said they're on track. They did like 70 last year and they're an advertiser and they were saying being an advertiser is the most stable business model, online model that they've seen. Uh, probably not. I mean, I don't think that's entirely true. Uh, there's a lot of fluctuations and, and things. <clears throat> the goal is just to build up your recurring as, as much as you can. That's mm -hmm. stable and it's to build out an offer with crazy profitability that you know is going to sustain. Cause like, I mean, we shouldn't kid ourselves. Costs are going to rise over the next three yeah. years. I agree. It's five years. I mean, it's a real estate game and there's only so much real estate and everybody's trying to buy it. Yeah. And um, you have to, you know, that doesn't make for a stable market, nor should it. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's pure competition. So is it a, is it a stable game? No, it's not, but there's ways to win at it. You know, what would you say gives you guys an edge? 
I think um, our ads are extremely creative. Mm. So I think Brandon is extremely charismatic. So if somebody was just to come and do their own offer, fitness offer, it'd be very difficult. Um, when people, like when I, I go to the gym with Brandon all the time and people come up to us all the time, it's like, oh my God, I saw your ads, blah, blah, blah. So what, as a marketer, what do I do? I talk to them and say, hey, what was it about Brandon that you liked? What didn't you like? Uh, and I pick their brain. And all the time it's that Brandon is me memorable. He's charismatic. He knows what he's doing. And he has the social credibility of Instagram. And then also by teaching these influencers. Nice. So yeah. the big part is our, our ads, uh, Brandon, our offer is very good. And then we're also really nerdy in terms of backend internet marketing. Nice. So that, that combination is great because most people don't have the entire combination. They're great marketers. Mm -hmm but they don't have, you know, the Brandon counterpart that I have, yeah, or they yeah. don't have the creative counterpart um, that is needed to drive good quality traffic these days. Yeah. What would you, uh, what would you say to someone who's basically like, let's say doing drop shipping right now or doing affiliate stuff and they wanted to build something more stable, kind of like what you have built, not exactly in the fitness niche, but what kind of advice would you give those people to go find the right person to, to that fits uh, the description that they would need to build something similar to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it starts with somebody you probably already follow, right? So you have to do some of your own internal psychology of like, who do I follow? Yeah. Who do I already follow? Why do I follow them? What makes me follow them? Like, and then, and then you could kind of backtrace it a little bit. So for me, I followed Brandon for a long time. I was a fan of his. Yeah. And why was I, I, I did some thinking. I was like, why was I a fan of his? I was like, oh, he's entertaining. Um, I learned things from him. He solves a problem. All of these things. So it could be anything. It could be. Uh, I don't know, a basketball trainer that you follow online. It could be a chef. It could be a chess player. I don't know. It could be a poker player. Like there's all these people that you're probably already have interest in that you could probably iterate on. And help yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's smart, man. What about for people who want to get on the inner online game in general, man, if you give them like two tips that they should, you know, they could apply to get started, what would those be? Yeah. So I think the, the biggest tip would be fail fast. So um, a lot of people I see is they try to get in and then their first thing doesn't work and then they give up and get discouraged. Yeah. yeah. And um, I understand that because it is discouraging because you put a lot of time and effort into it. But in business, you know, it's things are not easy. And as long as you fail fast and learn from it, I think you'll be fine. Um, nothing is really a loss. Everything's a gain in the end of the day. Um, totally. You learn how to do something out of the process. So look at, look at that. And then the second thing is fail cheap right so hmm. feel fast feel cheap you don't want to you know don't sink your life savings into something you know, test fast that's why drop shipping is great right because you could test offers fast you could um, test products fast you could build up put up a site fast and you could learn hmm. learn things um so as long as you fail fast and fail cheap you'll always learn something and you'll you'll always come out a winner so yeah. just those two things i think you're good and I, f I feel too like all that stuff's going to compound over time because you'll find out what doesn't work, what does, and then eventually get a winning formula. Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest guys in the game that you guys probably talk to every day have tested hundreds of things, right? Oh, yeah. And then they continue to. It's like it's not something that stops either. Or like Facebook changes and their offer gets banned. And, you know, three months later, they're spending 100 grand a day now on Facebook on their offer because now it's compliant. Right. They're always, right. they're always going, man. They don't stop. Yeah. Right. Um, like I'm, I'm good friends with, um, Alex Mayer, you know, Alex Mayer, the mentor box. He's good friends. With, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Ty Lopez. And he's testing products every day. Yeah. The guy's worth millions of dollars and he's every day he's testing. I mean, yeah. not product dropship products, but like offers, right. Different things to run all the time. And he's, this guy's a boss, right? He's done a billion dollars in online sales. And wow. he's Jesus. failing fast and failing cheap too. Yeah. yeah. Now that's, that's good advice, man. I think that's great for anyone getting started. We need to get that guy on the podcast also. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he sounds yeah, interesting. I'll, I'll ask him that guy's, uh, he's a beast. <laughs> that's awesome, man. <laughs> I was hanging yeah, with dude. him well, thank you. last night for a little What's bit. What's that? I was hanging with him last night for a bit. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And to the guy, like the biggest thing, I mean, that's the one thing I'll add is if you want to get started, I mean, I would find some sort of mentor. Mm. Um, just reach out people want to help you guys like isn't it kind of crazy how much people are willing to help yeah for sure i mean just if you be a little if you it's it's a give take relationship right yeah. so yeah if you go up to someone and says help me like help me build my business they're gonna say no but if you offer them something in exchange like when i meet 
people that I look up to, I never ask them for anything. It's, yeah. That's a recipe for failure. I always give them something in exchange and build some sort of rapport. Yeah. I mean, same thing with Cam. Um, before, like when I was talking to him a few days, a few days ago at the dinner, I wasn't asking him for things. I was like, Hey Cam, I found out this new scaling technique. Try it out. I'll send you the doc, the Excel. Yeah. Doc. Yeah. And then I, I don't need anything out of that. It's just, but it builds a rapport that, Hey, I could trust you. You could trust me. And that's the same thing I do with Alex, you know? I went up to him. I was like, Hey, I saw this thing on MentorBox. Like, if I were you, I'd test this. Yeah. And he's like, nobody's telling me how to do anything. Like, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. blah, blah, blah. And he appreciated that. Yeah. And yeah. Then now like we help each other. But um, if you get a mentor of some sort, like it accelerates the process because they'll allow you to um, yeah. not make mistakes and they'll guardrail you for sure. Yeah. I like the other thing you kind of alluded to too, was just like the value of a network in this space. Yeah. For sure. I mean, it's, it's everything because there's so many highs and lows yeah. um, and there's so many things you could test and so many things that are changing all the time that mm -hmm. if you have friends that you could talk to and bounce ideas off of and go to dinner with and go to the office with and work with and collaborate with, yeah. you'll learn things way faster because like so many times we're in a room and we're like, Hey, um, a square picture ad on news feed, target cost, um, bully, like bully method is working. Crazy. Yeah. And yeah. we're like, okay, let's try it. And we all try it and it works for everybody. And we're like, okay, cool. Let's like try more things. Yeah. Like just things like that, where if you were by yourself, it's harder to find things that are working or like, yeah. Hey, um, Snapchat, um, blah, blah, blah type ads are working. Go yeah. like, try it. Okay, cool. You know, and that's if just anyone's wondering what bully method is, it's manual bidding. That's like, it, there's no exact number, but like three X what your CPA is. Right. And then the logic is like, you're when you enter the Facebook off auction, you're just like kicking everyone out and you're yeah, winning it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I um, mean, it, it generally like it should work in times when Facebook costs are very high. Right. Yeah. I saw it, it was working great in um, November, December for me. Like nice. crazy That's awesome. bids, like $500 bids, $1,000 bids were working. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was I love great. it, man. I tried some 50 bids the other day on like a $50 CPA and I was, and it just like cranked my click cost. Really? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't working. But it's, gotta test it. You never know, man. You know what's interesting? I, I started testing five dollar ads again. I was like, let's just see what these do. Man, on a fifty dollar CPA converting at like two dollars and fifty cents. I'm like, no way. That's crazy. I heard the same thing the other day where it was somebody was telling me like these tiny ad sets are doing great. So yeah. Like those micro ones, like those dollar fifty ones. Yeah. Yeah. He was talking like two, three dollars. Yeah. yeah. Right. I've been testing all that stuff this week and some of it's been working, man. Yeah. We have a friend who has an e-com store. What has he been doing? Ten dollar ads for like three years. <laughs> he was like showing me his stats the other day. He's like, oh this is working really good. And like I'll I'll give it away a little bit. It was like uh it was DPA ads um just like running wide or whatever with his products. And he's just like, and I was looking at it and I was like, man, you still only bid like 10 to $15 on your ads. He's like, yeah, man, the ROI is insane. And like some of his ads have like spent like 150, made 700. Like what yeah. the hell are you doing, man? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I've been iterating a lot on that too. It's just a crap ton of ad sets. Yeah. It's just lower bids and just hopefully you get some spend across. The yeah. 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 I've been like, I was dabbling in like big budgets. Cause like our, our boy, Ryan, he, he spends heavy, man, like hundred G he'll like produce in a day. And so I'm like, I was trying to copy that model and I just can't make big budget work. Like no matter what I do, like I try everything, like different, different levels, like 500,000, so on anything 500 and below works way better for me. Yeah. I mean, it's I, every ad account is different too. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. That's one I, thing we've I have uh, ad accounts and they all act differently. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. We, uh, we've just been cranking up opening new accounts. So right now I'm running like the same stuff across like five or six accounts. And it's amazing to see the differences in how they work and how they run. Yeah. You see fluctuation across yeah. each one. Yeah. Yeah, I do. And uh, it's almost like the newer accounts that don't really have like a, and like, cause we're running affiliate stuff. Right. So I'm assuming that they're going to have some sort of bad rep. Like we're running like, white hat stuff but still you know world doesn't love it um so we notice like on fresh accounts like the cpa and the click cost is so much lower like one of my accounts that i just fired up today it's running probably like a 50 to 60 cent like less click cost than um similar account next to it that's been running for like a couple months crazy yeah crazy. that's to do with like feedback on the ads too and yeah um, 
all that stuff. So I, you could try different pages and things like that. Yeah, that's yeah. the other thing that we haven't really dabbled in is like multiple pages. Um, I don't know, man. I was like tr really trying to figure out like, will it make a difference in terms of the rep of the page and stuff like that? And that's something that I got to test this week. It's just like, there's so many different tests you can do. You can yeah. test them for days. I think everything matters, you know? Yeah. yeah it's crazy. For better or for worse. Yeah, man. Yep. Probably for better. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, dude, thank you for so much for hopping on and, uh, you know, helping out our audience and being here. It's cool to hear, like, it's actually cool to see the guy behind the face because I've seen this yeah. guy before all over my Instagram. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Uh, You're targeting the shit out of me. I haven't bought yet, though, so you might yeah. want to remove me. Also, but maybe I will now. Yeah, it's also cool to hear your story, man, because we didn't know each other since, like, we hit each other up on Instagram the other day, and here we are. So it's, uh, it's yeah. great to, like, meet you and hear your story. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hopefully I offered uh, something of value to, to you guys. Yeah, thanks awesome. So. Tyler, you want to close her out? Well, I was going to say, man, if uh, people want to get a hold of you, uh, is there a good way or yeah. how are you with that? Uh, yeah, you can send me a DM. Um, what's my handle? Uh, I, should, I changed my handle the other day. Yeah, so my handle is my name. It's um, J-A-A-N-B-H-A-T-I-A. -A -A. You can send oh, me a DM. You. You're an OG. Oh, yeah, you yeah. were... You were gonna. St you're starting to do some consulting too. I've been doing consulting, but uh, way less than I than I was. Yeah, because you were telling me that you wanted to talk about what was it that you were talking yeah. about? Yeah, we'll we'll keep it on the back burner for now. Yeah, you don't, uh, you yeah. don't want to give it away. All right. Not not quite yet, but I appreciate we're, it. We're here for you, man, because we're like we're always down to have people on it's interesting people, you know. So absolutely, especially know. people that drop knowledge. Yeah. Sweet, appreciate it. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, shoot me a DM. And, uh, I'll be out. I'll be out. Oh. Especially a DM that says, Hey man, I can make you more money. Exactly. <laughs> He's that's like, the best one. you see him light up when I said that? He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what yeah. I want. Like, it works. I mean, the funny thing is I, I, I gave that script to the exact script on how, how to close um, like an influencer or a partner to multiple people. And they use the exact same script and it worked every single time. Yeah. Wow. Wow. On multi I think three of my friends tried it out. On yeah, different, different people, business partners, influencers, and it worked. Every Dude, time. send that script our way, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Two thousand yeah. dollars minimum. Okay. Yeah, but it was, it was uh, essentially that. It was like, uh, hey, I could, you know, I love what I'm seeing. I can make you some money, blah blah blah. Yeah, that's all it was. So. Yeah, right. Simple works. Yeah, simple works. Yeah. Awesome. Well, dude, again, thank you so much for being on. Uh, everyone who's listening today, thank you so much for listening. If you're watching, thank you for that. Please don't forget to subscribe to YouTube and listening. Uh, please give us a five-star review on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and just stay part of the community. Thanks. Later, man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.